Hey everybody, Will from Holdfast Marine, your local boat shop, and we are back for the next part of working on these vent boxes. Um, here we have the two boxes, side by each. We've got this box here, and then we've got its cover uh, here. Okay, now, the cover is done. We've gone over the everything with the gel code, sanded it down, um, and I'm going to be working on this today because I want to get this ready to go. And pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some polyester fairing compound and I'm going to go over this whole thing. But first things first, I'm going to cut this hole out. And then I was originally going to router it, but I'm not going to because I don't want to. So I'm going to drill a hole out here with a Forzner bit, both sides, and then get in there with my little uh, tool and whoop zap that hole right out and then we're going to mix up some polyester fairing and we're going to fair uh, both sides of the well probably just one side today but at least this side so that i can get the edges where i want them all sealed up covered in nice couple little spots i got to sand but that'll be fine um, and then as far as the box goes what y'all missed was i went in and i did uh two layers of one chop strand matting uh 11708 and then the same both the chop strand and uh, 1708 for uh, tabbing. So each one of these corners is tabbed from about here to here, same over here. So it was chop strand matting and then chop strand uh, tabbing and then 1708 and then 1708 tabbing on top of that and sealed it all down. I used the, if you look at the corners here where you can see, oh, where's the camera? You can see how it's like radius in there. So what I used for that was that total boat. Um, <clears throat> uh, that was the total boat uh, structural repair putty. Uh, the stuff that in the last video I mentioned was similar to hull and deck. And I used um, just a, I took a piece of hardwood and I just scalloped the end or ovaled the end. And then made the joint up all four sides. And then put my tabbing right over that. But I didn't let it cure or anything. And that gave me some really nice radius corners um, in there. I mean, they're almost smooth to the touch. Which is the way I've been doing it for ever. And uh, not necessarily with the total boat stuff. But that's the way I've been doing it forever. And it, it always works out pretty good. And you get a really good bond in the corners, which you want. And this box is strong. On the inside of the old box... If you can see, hello, if you can see uh, right there, there's just a piece of wood um, and it looks like it's just glued, uh, super glued to this old frame, which you can see is, I mean, that's not strong. Um, but anyway, so you can see that there's a screw in there to hold this down. And I'm going to try and match that uh, with this the best I can. How I'm going to do that yet, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you can see I can't. Just blew a blood vessel. Uh, I can't squeeze that together. That's strong. And I, I could probably even stick it down on the ground here. And... Right? I'm... <laughs> I weigh 190 pounds. And that didn't even... I mean, it didn't even deflect. So... And we're going to do a little bit more testing with this tow boat stuff. Now... I've gone ahead and I've enlarged the circle out with my jigsaw, and now we're just gonna get to the awfulness of sanding. Well, that wasn't too bad. Um, 
I think I could have gotten a little bit closer with the jigsaw. Um, but it doesn't have to be super perfect because it's going to be covered up uh, by a big hunk of bronze. Um, so it doesn't have to be great. But as you can see, no sharp edges in there. I'm not cutting myself. Oh, you can't see. Not really any sharp edges. I'll, I'll probably hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. I'm still waiting for some uh, uh, total boat stuff that I ordered last week. Um, I think the day before Christmas, pretty sure. Um, and I understand, you know, it, usually when I order stuff from Jamestown, it's here sometimes the next day, if not just two days, uh, because they are only uh, in Rhode Island, which is the next state over pretty much from me. Um, so I usually get this stuff pretty quick, but you know, I'd be wanting to have a nice new year uh, as well myself. So anyway, enough talking and I'm going to do some sanding. Is that a fan? Everybody's begging for mercy. So we're going to be using the Total Boat Polyester Fairing Compound mixed with some MEKP, which I'm running low on Total Boat. Jamestown Distributors, I'm running low on MEKP. Um, yeah, so uh, they don't provide this stuff for me, Jamestown. I'm just saying that if some showed up at my house. Anyway, love you guys down there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be using the polyester fairing compound. Clean it with the Total Boat e-waxer and surface prep. Guys, I got to tell you, this is far far superior to acetone. This stuff is the bomb. I actually use this same stuff, not often, but on occasion, uh, to clean my aluminum before I weld it, after scotch brighting and, and uh, cleaning up. I'll actually use this because it stays on longer. And if I'm welding a, I don't want to say mirror finished piece of aluminum, but it needs to be clean, 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 and I want to take multiple passes, I use this Really, the, the contents of this are simple. It's uh, xylene and isopropyl alcohol and ethyl benzene. And I don't know what ethyl did to have a name like that, but that's what's in there, some ethyl benzene. And um, so it's, it's xylene is pretty much what it is. Um, it lasts a lot longer than the acetone. We know that the acetone flashes off really, really, really fast. So anyway, uh, here we go. Got my uh, polyester fairing compound, my MEKP, my piece. You don't need the dustpan. All right, so let's mix up some stuff. Now, this stuff on the back says that we need to put in 14 to 16 drops of MEKP per ounce. And you know what? Two ounces is going to be plenty, but again, it's impossible to measure. So I'm going to scoop and poop and scoop and poop. And that's going to be about two ounces for us in there. And then we will take our MEKP. See, I mark a line on there where uh, roughly 14 drops is. So I'll put that in there. And we'll put that put the cover back on there. And we'll stir it up. Okay. We're mixed up. Now... I'm gonna goober some on with this little stick. I'm gonna take my stir, my spreader. Well, I got the uh, dreaded, your iPhone storage is full message. <laughs> About halfway through doing that. And um, now, before I show you this, all y'all out there are gonna say, well, man, you really screwed that up. I didn't, I do this on purpose. This is a purposeful thing. It has nothing to do with my skills, the quality of the products, or my experience in doing this. This is how I do it. it. May take a little bit longer, a little bit more sanding, but it's how I do it. Full disclosure, full disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, this is how I do it. If you don't like it, there she be, right? And again, I know, I know what you're all saying. Jesus, Saint Christ, that's a mess. Trust me, it's not. And the reason that it's not is I didn't wrap any fiberglass around these edges. So if there's any pins or pits or anything like that in there, or it's out of wonk a little bit, I want to be able to perfectly straighten up 
those edges. Okay, the face I could care less about. We're just filling in the pinhole. Two layers of gel coat over this. That's going to smooth it out just fine. It's just a vent box. That's all. It's not a hull. Okay. So anyway, and then I goobered in some on the inside here um, just to kind of, and I'm just going to use my finger because I'm a man and I am not scared. Do you see how that makes that nice little, see there's some stuff in there for stuff to stick to. Right? It's okay to use your fingers. Don't be scared. Yeah, see, look at this. It's fine. You just take a paper towel. See? Just take a paper towel. Yeah. It's all gone. A little bit on my thumbs. All gone. No big deal. All right, I'm back. It's only been a couple of minutes, but I'm impatient, right? You all know that. You guys know I'm an impatient guy. I want to get this dry. I want to get this done. So we can move on to the fun stuff. The gel coating, the sanding, the polishing. That's my favorite. Um, so, I recently picked up a circulating fan for my for the other larger part of the shop. And uh, I am going to make my not patented but should be heat oven. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is made just with cardboard boxes. And this box fits perfectly. It goes right over the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this box into an oven by simply taking my fancy dancy hair dryer. Whoops. Screw that up a little bit. Take my hair dryer here and put her there. Trace that out. Just like that. Cover off. Get a little bit of gunk in there and cut a hole in it. <laughs> then I'm going to place that over the top of the box, like so. I'm going to stick my hair dryer in that hole and I want to kind of aim it up towards the top and it always wants to tilt. So thankfully we've got heavier stuff. Put that guy right there and we're going to turn it on low. It is now 1358, and I'm going to give this uh, 10 minutes with the dryer on low. we got to put it on low, otherwise it'll burn something. So here we go. That's high, and that's low, and that's going to create a little baking oven for me. I have another one over here that I use. This little oven I did the Mandalorian blaster with. And it's such a simple thing. You take a cardboard box, poke some holes in it, you get yourself a drying oven. Alrighty, everybody. Well, it's been a little while. Um, I, uh, aww. Aww. Yeah. My doozle hickey just came off of my, uh, yes, uh, it is reverse thread. Alrighty, folks. So I am, uh, Holy Jesus. Anybody out there want to buy me a uh, Festool vacuum? Because, ugh, I kind of hate having to use a crap on shop vac. I think it's tangled up all the time. Back to our regular... <laughs> can't talk either. Back to our regular scheduled program. Um, so here's the, uh, the piece here. And it's dry enough to sand. And what I wanted to show you is what I'm doing here is I just want to sand just until I see the wood there. And then I'm going to put a straight edge across it and see how straight it is. Um, the other things that I'm going to do is if you take a look here, you know, kind of where it's icky looking, I'm going to sand that by hand. Uh, the face I will sand um, uh, with, uh, with the Festool. But here I'm going to sand all this by hand. And I'll tell you stuff. I think I had a stroke. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Sanding polyester fairing compound is dangerous. And I'm not saying it's dangerous because I'm putting this mask on. It's dangerous because it removes so quickly. Um, that's why I love this stuff. Because, I mean, man, you could sand this stuff and be done with this in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but anyway, that's what that's what I'm going to do. We're going to get in here and we're going to hand sand a bunch of this stuff. And uh, yeah, 
And I'm going to, of course, do the time lapse because uh, uh, XM Radio 90s on 9 is pumping some jams today. So I'm going to get back to listening to some music and uh, you're going to watch me sing. <laughs> Well, that came out pretty good. It's, uh, you know, it's got some little pinholes and stuff in it, but that's from me, again, not from the product. I got my edges pretty well uh, done up. Um, I'm not going to worry about the inside of this hole because I was searching through some, uh, be right back. I was looking for something uh, a little while ago, and I was saying to myself, man, I wish I had one of those little drum sanders like you put in... Uh, you know, in your drill press so that I could, you know, sand this stuff out. And I opened up a cabinet. I already own two of them. It's just, you know, there are just some of those tools that you don't use a lot. And then you, my voice just cracked. This video is going to be like a blooper reel. Um, anyway, so. I mean, it's. It's fairly square. On that side. Little little gap right there. I don't know if you can see it, um, but the other side is is atrocious. Um, I mean, there's a pretty. Can you see it? There's a pretty decent uh, gap there. Now that's a, I'm okay with that. I really am. It's again, these don't have to be perfectly square, but I they need to look nice. So that being said, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and. Do a second coat and it's 20 past three so we'll see how long that takes but yeah really happy so far all right everybody i'm gonna let this uh sit up overnight uh it's just about four o'clock or so that clock right there is inaccurate it in fact hasn't moved time in uh, three years there's a reason we'll get to that in a later video anyway um so yeah it's cooking it's pretty you know, starting to polyester resize itself. And yeah, I'm just going to leave this till the morning and sand it. I got a couple little spots. I got a spot right there that, I don't know, a little fuzzy got into or something. But it's okay because we're going to be covering this in gel coat. And as you know, just as well as I do, gel coat's amazing because it goes on thick. And we can just sand it down. Anyway, so that's where we're at. And... Yeah, and the backside, we're not going to fare at all. I'm just going to spray gel on it. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much. I'm not editing that out. No, because I can't talk today. Because what the f***? Um, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for watching this second part of the video. Next time will be gel coat. If you like the video, subscribe. Hit the little bell notification. And for the love of God, comment. Like the video. Ugh. I don't know how other people do this on YouTube. It must be terribly frustrating for them. Anyway, guys, have a great one. See ya.